This is going to be God's Game of Thrones, episode number 11. And we've came a long way. We have saw King Noah. We saw King Adam. We saw how Lucifer, the former king of both kingdoms, is jealous of the human race. He's jealous of the new kings that God has set up. And now we're going to look at something that's going on behind the scenes that started way back with Adam and is still going on even today. Behind the scenes, the former king of both kingdoms, Lucifer, has his little minions doing a lot of dirty work for him. And these are rulers of the darkness of this world. These are principalities and powers. They rule over places. They possess people. They influence people. Ephesians 6.12 talks about them in the New Testament, in the Pauline epistles. It says in Ephesians 6.12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. A lot of the things I'm going to talk about in this study are speculation because these uh, people, are creatures, are so mysterious that you can't figure them out. There's some things about them that we just don't know. They're mysterious. But there is an invisible war going on today. Not only are you fighting the flesh, but you are fighting these invisible powers. And you'll hear Bible believers have a different take on them, what they are, where they came from. And that's okay because they're so mysterious. All you really need to know is that there is an invisible war, an invisible enemy who's going to attack you. That's all you really need to know. They influenced Adam and Eve. They influenced King Noah, as you saw. They influenced the people who built the Tower of Babel, as we will see pretty soon in this God's Game of Thrones study. The Lord says to stay away from these beings and those who contact them. Not only stay away from them, but stay away from people who hang around them. This means stay away from psychics, witches, wizards, in any occult things, Leviticus 19.31 says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. See, one of the names for these minions in the Bible is familiar spirits. And the Lord says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits. And notice how they're associated with wizards. This magic stuff that's going on a lot today. Leviticus 20 and verse 6 says, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them. I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. You see that? Notice the strong words the Lord uses toward those who hang out with these devil possessed people. Now, Deuteronomy 8 10 through 11. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. You'll notice the kings of the Old Testament went against all these things. They broke all the rules there in Deuteronomy 18 and dealt with these familiar spirits. Remember that name, familiar spirits, because these minions got more than one name in the Bible. When you go through the Bible and you see that familiar spirits, underline it. And remember, that's the enemy, the invisible enemy that we're talking about today. But look at these Old Testament kings. In 2 Kings 21, 6, it says, And he made his son passed through the fire and observed times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. Notice how familiar sp spirits and wizards are just associated with each other in the same verse so much. And it says, He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. That was King Manasseh, wicked King Manasseh. It's no different today. You hear about rulers today who consult with the so-called dead. When they want to make a decision. Second Kings 23-24 talks about workers with familiar spirits. The rulers of the darkness of this world. The unclean spirits. Work with 
flesh and blood rulers of this world and make a conspiracy against Jesus Christ. Psalms 2.2 2 says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. That's why I'm a big conspiracy theorist, especially with government stuff, with the big shot rich people of this world. I think they're doing very dark things that would make the things that your average drug dealer on the street, it would make what he's doing look like a Sunday school class compared to what they're doing in the dark, behind the scenes, working with unclean spirits. And why is this going on? Because Lucifer, the former king of both kingdoms, is jealous and he wants the throne back. Why seek after unclean spirits when you can seek the Holy Spirit? Isaiah chapter 8 and 19 says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards, once again, there's that wizards again, wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek, after, seek unto their God for the living to the dead? You'll notice a common theme through the Bible that the big shots of this world seek the dead above the living. Although evil spirits hate God, and God hates them, he will use them as puppets to accomplish things. He will send evil spirits to people. Judges 9.23 says, Then God sent an evil spirit. Okay, so they're called familiar spirits. They're called evil spirits. God sent an evil spirit in Judges 9.23. So they're, they're, I mean, they're under the control of God. Even though they're rulers of the darkness of this world, there's still a ruler over them. 1 Samuel 16, 14, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. So as a judgment, Saul was plagued by evil spirits. Now notice a weakness of evil spirits is good, clean music. 1 Samuel 16, 23 says, And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. If you feel like you're being tempted by spirits, then put on some psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Play it, and you can almost feel the unclean spirits leaving. You immediately feel a different atmosphere than you would having your heavy metal and your rap and your contemporary Christian. It's a completely different feeling, completely different spirit that comes in the room. 1 Samuel 18.10 says, And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand, as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand, and Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. So notice that Saul was so full of an evil spirit that he prophesied. Not only that, but he tried to kill David. Just because someone is preaching doesn't mean they aren't devil-possessed. I mean, he was preaching. He was prophesying. It's just like into the eyes of looking into the eyes of Kenneth Copeland as he preaches. And you'll see what Saul was like. Look at Kenneth Copeland's smile when he's saying his false doctrine. It almost looks like the Joker, creepier than the Joker. Also notice that the evil spirit moved Saul to violence. He attempted to murder David. Many times you wonder, how can a man murder people and not even feel guilty about it? Men like BTK and Ted Bundy and Joseph James D'Angelo, the Golden State Killer, and all these other serial killers. They kill people and then take trophies of the kills, take something from the crime scene so that they can relive the kill years later, showing their conscience never gets to them. They never start feeling bad about what they've done. How can that happen? It's because unclean spirits. If you get full of unclean spirits, you're not going to have any feeling for anybody else, and you'd be able to kill someone just like a cat would kill a mouse. The only real cure for evil spirits 
is the Lord Jesus Christ in his power. Notice how Jesus Christ cures men of evil spirits. In Luke 7, 21, it says, In that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues, and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind he gave sight. In Luke 8, 2, it says, And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. So this shows that a person can be infested with more than one devil at once. And notice that we've seen them called familiar spirits, we've seen them called evil spirits, and now they're going to be called devils. In Luke, the book of Luke and, and other places, you see them called devils. So there's one devil, but many devils. Just like there's one son of God, many sons of God. But the Lord gave power to his disciples and the apostle Paul to cure people of evil spirits. Just like the Lord was curing people of these evil spirits, the Lord gave his power to the disciples and to the apostle Paul. In Acts 19, 11 through 15, it says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists. You see, Hollywood doesn't have an original thought. They got the exorcist movies. They're always coming out every now and then with some new exorcist type movie. Exorcist took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? So the unclean spirits know Christians by name. They knew Jesus. They knew Paul. They are aware of the power of Christ that is in you. And you don't know the unclean spirit or even know it's there. But it sees what you're doing and watches what you're doing for the Lord and hates it. Acts nineteen sixteen, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Notice the violence associated with it, being possessed with evil spirits. Jesus Christ has complete authority <clears throat> over the devil and unclean spirits. There is no contest. All the power they have is simply just allowed to be there by the Lord himself. If the Lord didn't allow it, then they wouldn't have power at all. Mark one twenty seven says, And they were all amazed, and so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits. And they do obey him. They obey the Lord Jesus Christ. So we've seen them. Familiar spirits. They're called evil spirits. They're called devils. And here you see them called unclean spirits. They're unclean. Mark one thirty two. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. So they're bringing them to Jesus because Jesus is the only cure. And the devils know all about Jesus Christ. They know the truth of the Bible and know more than any Bible teacher that you've met. They know that Jesus is Christ. <clears throat> Mark one thirty four, And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Luke 4.41, And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. They knew it. So they know the right doctrine. And 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So they're the rulers of the darkness of this world, principalities and powers, familiar spirits, evil spirits, devils, unclean spirits, and seducing spirits. And they give out doctrine. It said doctrines of devils. Devils have doctrines. They know which doctrine is right because they know more Bible than you. And they teach the opposite of what's right to deceive James 2.19 says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. 
the devils also believe and tremble. And since they know that there's one God, they want to make you think there's more than one God. Now, Mark chapter 5 is one of the greatest parts of the Bible on this subject. Mark 5, chapter, or Mark 5 and verse 1, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. So devils are attracted to Jesus Christ. The devil-possessed man met him coming out of the tombs. This means they are associated with dead things. Just like the bod a dead body in the Bible was considered unclean, the spirits like dead things. That's why they're unclean spirits. Mark 5, 3, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. So you see, when a devil possesses a human, it can give him supernatural strength to break chains. Mark 5, 4, because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. So he's out of control. He can't be tamed. When I was a little kid, a common slang term was off the chain. If someone saw something they liked, they would say, that's off the chain. Just like the devil-possessed guy here, he was off the chains. He did whatever he wanted, when he wanted he, he just rebelled if he wanted to. He didn't have a job. He did what he wanted to all day long. He was off the chain. He broke the chains. Mark 5, 5, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. So he didn't work. He didn't have a purpose. All he did was self-loathe. If you're someone that just sits around thinking about how bad you have it, then there's a good chance you're being influenced by unclean spirits. Are possessed. Notice also that he did self-mutilation. Devils are what make you physically hurt yourself. Devils are what influence you to kill yourself. Or doing something that you know isn't good for you. That's not from God. That's influence of another spirit. And these spirits are what the devil has used from the beginning of time to get things to go in his favor. To take down kings. Mark 5, 6, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. So this devil-possessed man ran and worshipped Jesus. Now, to a lot of people, this would seem strange. Why would a devil worship the Lord? Well, devils know the truth. They know Jesus is God. They know where the power is at. And I've noticed obvious devil-possessed men are attracted to Jesus Christ. They mention Jesus Christ quite often. Just because somebody jumps up and shouts and praises God and runs around doesn't mean anything. The devils ran and worshipped Jesus. You ever heard of someone having a running fit in church? Maybe they are really worshipping God. Maybe they aren't. I'm not against having a running fit. But the devils ran and worshipped Jesus. So just because someone's running around the church with their hands in the air and screaming. That doesn't mean they're worshiping the Lord. Mark 5, 7, And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So they know who the Jesus is. They know that he has power. Yet they're against Jesus. They ran and worshiped Jesus. Yet they're against Jesus. Just because someone runs and worships Jesus doesn't mean that they're worshiping him like you do. You see what I mean? See, once again, the devils know the right doctrine. They believe the deity of Jesus Christ. They know all about hell. They don't deny everlasting torment. They are way ahead of the Jehovah's Witnesses who deny both of those things. The devils know a lot more doctrine than the Jehovah's Witnesses. Mark 5, 8, 9, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Years ago, they made a movie called Legion about some supposed angel or something Hollywood made up. Hollywood can't ever come up with something new. Everything they have can be found in a King James Bible. So this man had so many devils in him at once that they called they called themselves a legion. 
Uh, Ruckman teaches that the unclean spirits have to be really small for that many to inhabit the same body. Not to mention the devil is called Beelzebub, which means Lord of the Flies, so he teaches they could be as small as a fly, which could be true. Like I said, a lot of about these unclean spirits, we just have to speculate about it. So his theory could be true, but since they are spirits, I guess they could all mesh in together into one. Since they would have the ability to go through solid objects, they could simply just go through each other and all stand in one spot together since they can go through solid objects. Mark 5, 10 through 13, And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there under the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us unto the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand and were choked in the sea. So either the devils went into 2,000 pigs, or there were 2,000 devils that took over 2,000 pigs. That's a lot of devils. Either way you look at it. Mark 5, 14 and 15, They that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done, and they came to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Notice that when the devils left the man, he was clothed and in his right mind. Have you ever met someone that at one time had a sound mind, and then later on they seemed to have went nuts? This could be a sign of devil possession. The man was nuts, and then now he's clothed and in his right mind. For example, I know a woman who messes around with black magic and psychics, and now she's saying that the government has been flying over her house in black helicopters. Although I believe she's just seeing things, it is something that it's black helicopters that she's seen. She also said that the government recently zapped her with their satellites from the sky and gave her a nose job. Her nose looks the same to me. Then she said she had a heart attack and came back to life. At one time, this woman was right in her mind. She started messing around with occult stuff, and now she's just crazy. She's devil-possessed. I forgot to mention that she said she is friends with the devil. Mark five sixteen through 19. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray to him to depart out of their coast and then when, when he was coming to the ship he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him Howbeit jesus suffered him not but saith unto him go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee the man in whom the devils were now desires to follow jesus christ however not in the same satanic fashion as the unclean spirits did. There's a difference between someone who worships Jesus Christ because that is their God and Savior. There's a difference between that and someone who is infatuated with Jesus Christ because they sense his power. Now here's another case of devil possession in Mark 9, 20. It says, And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. Once again you have self-mutilation associated with devil possession. This reminds me of what you see in some churches where men are supposedly getting full of the Holy Ghost and are wallowing around on the ground. I've seen one video where everyone is in the congregation and they're all doing this holy laughter thing. They were all laughing hysterically. And I don't show my sense of humor much on these videos, but I do like to tell a lot of corny, clean jokes. Uh, many people would call them dad jokes, um, but... Nobody ever laughs at these jokes, except for me, after I tell it. But I thought it, I thought when I was watching that video, I'd like to stand on stage and give all those dad jokes, and I'd finally get some laughs, because these people just never stop laughing. And then maybe teach on devil possession, because these people have got some problems that's not normal. You can obviously tell there's something going on with them. Mark 9, 21. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? Jesus asked the father, how long ago was it that this spirit came to the child? And he said, of a child. Isn't that something? The devils came at the weakest link, the child. He came 
to him of a child. Who are the devils after today? The weakest links. If they can't abort the baby, then when they get older, they want to be putting them in sex trafficking. The devil possessed pedophiles who are just complete perverts go after the kids and want to read them stories in the public libraries. Have you seen that? These queer boy drag queens want to go in these libraries and read stories to little kids. These drag queens are full of devils. They're infested. Look at how they dress and that junk they put on their face. And they want to hang around your children. That is creepy. And what's even creepier is that the parents take their kids to this crap and they act like it's okay. That is disturbing and shows we're in the last days, man. It's creepy. Mark 9, 22, And oft times they had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So they want to destroy you. Look at that. It cast him into the fire and into the water. Now Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. So they're also called foul spirits, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. So the Lord has so much power over unclean spirits, he can get the devils out of you and make it where they can't enter into you anymore. And that's why a Christian can't be possessed in the sense an unclean spirit gets your soul. However, he can possess your flesh. He can get your flesh. A big criticism for a lot of Bible believers is that we believe a Christian can be devil-possessed. The rebuttal is that a Christian can't be possessed because he has the godly, because he has the Holy Spirit in him. And that's true, we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. But once again, they refuse to look at things a little deeper and they forget about the flesh. Your flesh isn't born again. And you can yield your flesh to be members. You can yield your flesh as instruments of unrighteousness. And in 1 Corinthians 5, a saved man was turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. So a Christian's flesh can be possessed, but the devil can't get your soul. Now notice what Jesus uses to cast out the spirits in Matthew 8, 16. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. So the word of God casts out the spirits. If you want to keep the devils off you, then you have to have a good meal of the word of God a few times a day. That get, gets the unclean spirits off of you. Matthew nine thirty two through 34 says, And as they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. So the man couldn't speak when he had the devil. This is interesting. Have you ever been around someone and it's like it took everything you had just to open your mouth to say something to them? I've been around people that it took everything I had just to open my mouth and speak around them. Did they bring some type of spirit with them like that? This is why in many cases you need to pray for boldness, that you may open your mouth boldly. Matthew twelve twenty four says, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So, Beelzebub, Beelzebub is the devil. And I'm sure you've heard it in that famous Queen song, Bohemian Rhapsody, where they mention the devil's name. And that name means Lord of the Flies. Beelzebub is prince of the devils. That is, the former king of both kingdoms, Lucifer, the devil, Satan. In God's Game of Thrones. And it, there is Bible proof that some devils are more wicked than other devils. If you look at Matthew 12, 43 through 45, it gives you some very good insight on unclean spirits. It says, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with him 
self seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So things we learn from these verses is that devils find rest in the housing of a lost man's body, while the Holy Spirit lives in the temple of a saved man's body. Today, the unclean spirit can find a lost man and inhabit him. And the last man, the lost man may try to turn over a new leaf and gets rid of the devil, but then the devil comes back and finds it empty, swept, and garnished. It is cleaned up, but it's empty. There's no Holy Spirit inside. So he takes seven more spirits, more wicked than himself, and the man is even worse than he was before. This is what creates a self-righteous, religious, devil-possessed person. Mark 16, 9. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared to Mary, first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast out seven devils. Once again, as I said before, you see more than one devil can inhabit a single person. Now, notice something else in that same chapter, Mark sixteen seventeen through 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So you see that casting out devils is associated with all the other sign gifts that the apostles had, like speaking in tongues, taking up serpents, drinking any deadly thing. If you have listened to my other studies about the sign gifts, then you know I teach that these sign gifts have temporarily seized. When the Lord stopped dealing with the Jews, and they'll start up again when he begins to deal with the Jews again in the tribulation. But the power to cast out devils was another sign to unbelieving Jews. And it doesn't seem like we have the ability to cast out devils in the way that the apostles did. But we still have power over them. And we still face them every day. It's just not a thing where, you know, the, the devils go, or the apostles go around casting out devils everywhere. We don't do that today. We have another way that we combat them. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So how do we combat them? Ephesians six thirteen and 14 says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, truth and righteousness. Hold on to the truth of the word of God, and stay on a righteous path, if you want to combat these devils. Ephesians 6.15, And have your, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The power is in the gospel. You want to cut the unclean spirits, if you want to do that, then preach the gospel everywhere you go. And it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in the King James Bible. Put your faith that God's going to get you through it and has power over unclean spirits. Don't walk around in fear. Don't be afraid of the fiery darts of the wicked. Ephesians 6, 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. A daily reading of the Word of God and meditation with study and a believing heart will cleanse you of unclean spirits. Ephesians six eighteen, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Pray them off of you and others. Ephesians 6, 19, and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Pray that you can open your mouth boldly. Cast some of those spirits, catch your tongue, just like that dumb man possessed of the devil. So I don't believe people today have the power to go around casting out devils in the sense that the apostles had. But there are still ways we fight them and we still have power over them through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not saying the Lord might not cross dispensational lines at times and allow somebody to cast out a devil like they did back then, but if someone really has the power to go cast out devils like the apostles had it, 
then why don't they go on the streets of Salem, Massachusetts during Halloween and cast them out or go to a Lady Gaga concert and cast them out or to the Billy Elish or Elish, how you say her name, concerts and cast them out there. Just like, you know, we say the faith healers should go to the nearest hospital and heal all the people. If people really got the gift of casting out devils, then go where the devils are and cast them out. But we don't have that gift like that today, like the apostles had it. I'm not saying you can't, you know, fast and pray and read the Bible and get them off of you that way and pr pray them off. But in the sense of that they had it back then, it's, that's not a, a common thing today. But the devils not only inhabit bodies, but also places. In Revelation 18, 2, it talks about Babylon. It says, Babylon the Great has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So there are places that when you go there, you can almost feel the evil in darkness, whether it be a house, or a mall in a big city, or on a street, or in a church, or in an entire state or even country. Also notice how they are associated with hateful birds. I guess that's where the devil got the idea for angry birds. And Stephen King got the idea for the birds movie. Unclean spirits are likened to birds in the Bible. Isaiah 34, 9 through 11 will show you that. And just like the unclean spirits like dead things, so does the unclean birds. After the Lord defeats all of his foes at the second coming, the fowls come down to feast on their flesh. Devils like worship, like the devil, they want to be the greatest. And that is what the game is about. It wouldn't surprise me a bit if there were unclean spirits in competition with the devil himself. And they want men to worship them and to sacrifice to them. Leviticus 17, 7. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a-whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. Deuteronomy 32, 17. They sacrificed unto devils, not to gods, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Revelation 9, 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, that repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. Second Chronicles 11.15 And he ordained him priest for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. So a lot of these entertainers are nothing more than priests for devils. They're just up there entertaining people to get praise for the devils that's inhabiting their body. Psalms 106, 37, Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters and the devils. This happens every time an abortion is committed, and there are children who are literally being sacrificed to devils. They're after your kids, just like the witches on the Hocus Pocus movie. Just like Peter Pan comes to the window of a child's bedroom that is based off the Pan God, like the movie Pan's Labyrinth, like on the Chronicles of Narnia movie where the goat man leads the little girl away that represents the Pan God. So where do unclean spirits come from? Some people say they are fallen angels, and I, I really wouldn't argue with that. Some men say they are the disembodied spirits of the giants. Some say they are spirits that inhabited the earth during the gap. My honest answer is I don't know what they are or where they come from. And if I gave a guess myself, I think they are counterfeit life. But that's just a theory. I'm not teaching that as absolute fact. But in Revelation 16, 13 through 14, it says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. I think it is significant there the saying, like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon like frogs. Remember the battle between the magicians and Aaron, and God used Moses and Aaron to bring forth live frogs, and the magicians through the power of the devil brought forth live frogs too? 
Exodus 8, 7 says, And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. And those unclean spirits came out of the mouth of the dragon, which is the devil, like frogs. So the devil can't make something from dust and copy the creation of Genesis, but the Lord does allow him to give life, just like the image of the beast will be given life in the tribulation. So while I don't teach this as abs an absolute doctrinal fact, the unclean spirits could be a result of counterfeit life made by the devil himself. And if you really want to play it safe, just say, I don't know what they are. And if someone asks me what they are or where they came from, I, I just say, I don't know, because I, I really don't. We got all these speculations. I've heard most, probably most of the speculations people have on the subject. It's just fun to speculate on these things. When it comes right down to it, all you need to know is that they're not your friend. And you need to do the things written in Ephesians 6 to keep them off your back. Other than that, where they came from doesn't really matter so much. It's just something fun to talk about on a rainy day with some believers who won't get bent out of shape over having different beliefs. But the most popular belief is that they are fallen angels. And I, I don't really wouldn't write off that conclusion. If they are fallen angels, then they would have had to change form after their fall, which is very possible because Lucifer changed form. Lucifer was perfect in beauty. He was the anointed cherub. Now he's the serpent and Leviathan. He went from being a cherub to a dragon. In Zechariah 5, you have female unclean spirits with wings. And all the occurrences in the Bible of angels are male without wings. So there seems to be some female spirits with wings. We know it's unclean spirits because in verse 8, the angel says... In Zechariah 5, 8, the angel says, this is wickedness. Now, maybe these aren't unclean spirits in the sense that we have been studying. Maybe they're a different one entirely, but some there's, there's something very strange about them that seems different to me. But, you know, that's just speculation again. As I said, it's, it's a lot of speculation about what they are exactly, where they came from exactly. But you see... Uh, you just don't need to get bent out of shape on these things. A lot of these creatures, we won't have the answers until eternity. When the king of both kingdoms shows up, he'll make the unclean spirit pass out of the lamb, the real, the real king of both kingdoms, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Zechariah 13, 2, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. So one day you're no longer going to have to worry about facing an unclean spirit.